Welcome to Urban Fantasy PH. We are creatives who live in an urban society and give readers wish fulfillment by way of our stories, which is fantasy, but reflective of reality. Here, we get to talk to fellow creatives like writers, authors, artists, comic book creators, filmmakers, you name it. We create and share our art here in the Philippines, as well as abroad. My name is CJ Edmonds, I'm your host, and here is today's episode. Okay, good morning and welcome back to another episode of Urban Fantasy PH. Now our show is aired every Wednesday, both for Spotify and on my YouTube channel. Now, if in case you simply want to listen to us, you can do that or watch us on YouTube. That choice we leave to you. Now we are headed towards the finish line for our current season, which is the second. And this today is the eighth episode of our second season and 14th overall for the podcast. Now, today on the show, we have a traditional painter and an independent comic book artist as well. Together with his wife, Guada, he has founded Kurosaku. And this is a tandem art group where they publish their own artwork, their own comic book, a uh, collection of poetry and novels. Now, he calls his art style book vandalism or ad art. And while the term itself may sound like an affront to all bibliophiles out there. It is nonetheless <laughs> a process wherein Marius uses pages of a book as his canvas, and he would add art to the pages of the book as he sees fit. Now, he believes that he adds art to one that is already there and thus elevates the page onto the artwork itself. Now, he also skins the flesh off his subjects and exposes their inner beauty using a red ballpoint pen to which he refers to a style called masochism. Now, for sure, in the course of today's conversation, we will learn more terms that may raise an eyebrow or two <laughs> or, even your, or even your academic hackles. But nonetheless, please welcome Marius Black to the show. <laughs> yeah, thank you, CJ. Thank you for having me. Good uh, morning, thank Marius. <laughs> thank you so much for having me in the Urban Podcast PH, or PH Podcast. Or, uh, actually, uh, urban, fantasy, urban Fantasy PH podcast. There I'm go. sorry, Urban Fantasy <laughs> PH podcast. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> no, hey, no, no need to be nervous. Tay tay lang naman na dito. So, um, reading your bio out loud and coming across those terms that you use to describe your style and your process, I'm sure I'm not the only one who sort of like did a double take when they first heard it. Um, is this a self-coined process term? Or there really is an industry standard uh, term for these um, forms that uh, you've accomplished. You've, you know, uh, accomplished. I'm sorry for the question, but medyo noob tayo in these things, and I'm sure our listeners and viewers would also want to know. Sure. Uh, well, for the the one thing that you, or sorry, the earlier thing that you mentioned about the masochism and vandalism about that, uh, it's basically a uh, well. I made that up <laughs> because okay. All right. yeah so it's um the process that i do is um i like uh, get or find like um images online or sorry mm -hmm. on books not online okay. so on books and then i try to draw over them the images example for example um the renaissance paintings mm -hmm. of uh, da vinci or even michelangelo his sketches and then okay. I also get uh, like magazine pages of uh, like men's magazine, like FHM and stuff like that. And then what I try to do is like uh, uh, skin the, the subjects there. Mm -hmm. So I use ballpoint pen and then I just uh, try to um, skin them. Uh, it's actually like an ironic a term if you're gonna skin them because i'm actually adding something on the onto the, the page mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's not really skinning it's like adding like he said earlier adding art to them so it's it's basically um um like drawing over to their skin like uh having to add like uh, layers of uh, uh strands of muscles over their skin mm -hmm. and i i termed it like I actually have like, uh, like a masochism is a tendency to uh, have pleasure from pain. <laughs> okay, I get it. 
Yeah, yeah. And I was sort of interested and became at least a masochist when I was younger <laughs> for some uh, for some sort of reason that I won't go into right now. <laughs> but but it's basically. Uh, Um, what do you call this? Um, I I try to uh, uh, call them masochists because if you're imagine if you're skinned, uh, that that's in like you're in pain the whole time. If you're if you're you're being skinned or your 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 flesh is skinned, mm -hmm. and then when that happens, you, you I think the psychological thing that will happen is you're just gonna love the pain all <laughs> all throughout so i i dubbed it masochism that but there's no art style like um called masochism before there is a condition like uh, yes masochism. yeah right but, but but not the art style well but if you're kind of clav barker and hellraiser yeah. then, then you probably have an idea of what we're referring to but um we'll get back to that particular art form uh, <laughs> that, uh, that you so explicitly um, laid out to us. But one <laughs> of the art forms that you've also adopted as your own is called uh, okio, uh, Okioe. I, I, yes. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I had to do some research to understand <laughs> what it really is. And if it does sound Japanese to everyone, that's because it is. Now, but for our listeners, I would, uh, I would love to hear it from you, uh, Maris, and explain to our audience what exactly is this particular art form and why did it strike a chord in you, which in turn made you create your own series of artwork that you dubbed as Manila Ukiyo-e? Yeah, that's a good question because um, I, I really am like interested in Japanese art and culture ever since I was like a high school student. Mm -hmm. I was like, um, into manga and anime when I was in high school and then eventually I saw like paintings of Japanese artists back then when I was in college mm -hmm. so that really struck a chord with me because it, it's simplicity and it's you know it's elegance and beauty in in so, so little lines mm -hmm. and it's aesthetic that you know it really stuck with me that I made my own uh, comic books in manga style uh, when I was a teenager, independent comic books, and then eventually growing up, I saw some like um, artworks that in that are in Okioe style, and I really had to like um, adapt my art style to that because one there was uh, um, there are, there are art events here in the Philippines like conventions and art bazaars, and then we can sell like artworks there so. But you know, when when a typical like uh, outsider or a uh, uh, person like walks by or a passerby walks by our booth, they're not gonna buy our oil paintings that's worth thirty five thousand or twenty thousand pesos. So I came up with the that art style, the Manila Okiwe art style. So it's simple, it's elegant, but it's uh, I can price it cheap because it's a smaller version of a painting, mm -hmm. and it's it's also. Um, in a watercolor style and the thing about it is the ukiyo-e art style from japan it's actually made from um, a print a wood block print so they they carved the wood blocks you know imagine they didn't have like printing press back then when they, mm -hmm. when they invented that so they had to like carve every block every color uh, resonate uh is significant to one block of, of, of wood block mm -hmm. so if there's like four colors in that uh, art print, you, they have to like carve that thing like four times uh, significant to every color for that. So what I did was uh, if I'm gonna like imitate that style or since I was inspired by that style, I wanted to like, because it's easy to, to do that if you're gonna make like multiple, multiple copies of the artwork, you can price it like cheaper. You don't have to price it that high because you have like copies. So what I did was instead of well, I don't know how to carve wood, so what I did is the modern approach for it. I photocopied the outline that I had mm -hmm. from from I like drew on the pa on paper and then I photocopied that on like numerous watercolor papers and then I was able to like do a like a Xerox copy or photocopy of like multiple of the designs and then just painted them by hand. 
So the thing was, um, I was able to do that often, and then people like really liked it because another thing about Ukiyo-e, well, aside of for me for uh, pricing it cheaper because I have like multiple copies of each painting, um, it's it's because the Ukiyo-e art style or the Ukiyo-e from Japan um, tells the story of the modern or sorry the their typical like slice of life. Uh, happening in Japan, so their daily lives. They're, it's just like uh, telling their everyday story in the, those paintings, like the fisherman or the farmers, or even the like more hedonistic side of the of their uh, culture back then. So, well, the art style I ca- I kind of like get inspired from the Japanese, but also the theme. Instead of painting like Japanese people, I of course painted. Like our Filipino Pinoy people in the in the city in Manila, and then that I think was really one of the uh, uh, the thing that like a lot of people uh, resonated with because I was painting like people who's like cooking fishbowl and selling banana cues and even scramble. So yeah, people like saw that and then it it they it they. They got it. They connected with it. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I saw it and I, and I liked it. And I love the descriptions that you made it. Um, your, your illustrations are, 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 are it, it evokes a, a sense of, of course, a sense of familiarity because it is based on common folk. And um, there's a sense of, you know, profoundness as well in, in the illustrations. And, and I'm loving it. Um, I'm trying to understand when you say woodblock printing so let's say for example you are going let's say if we're going to go uh hardcore with the uh the japanese um style um imagine let's say you want to do a okio a version of let's say a bonsai plant and instead of painting the bonsai you are going to carve the image of the bonsai on that wood piece of wood is that it yes so imagine so it's, it's like a I might to understand it in in basic layman's terms. Woodblock printing is like a big stamp, in a way, because that's how I'm picturing it. Am, am I getting it right? Big stamp. A, a, a stamp. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, sure, yeah, exactly, it, yeah. It's like a it's like a big stamp of yes. the image on the wood, which is carved out, yeah. and then you just prop you just probably either put ink directly on the wood, or you have a a very large stamp pad. That has yes. ink on it, and then you put yeah. the wood block there, and then you stamp it on a canvas. Exactly. That's that's a good analogy. That is actually it. <laughs> okay, but and if you if you let's say you want to have different colors, yes. um, on to let's say still back to the bonsai plant, yeah. uh, do you put do you put paint on the particular let's say stem of the bonsai plant of the wood block, so that when you stamp it on the canvas or on the surface that you want that particular image to come out. Yes. It will automatically come out as the basic, maybe black, and then yes. maybe some blue and some green. Is that right? Yes, that's exact. That's exactly it. Um, well, for, yeah. For example, the drawing of the bonsai is drawn like in a black outline. So that being black, that's one stamp. And mm-hmm. then imagine the leaves. The leaves are green, so that's another stamp. But the branches or the the trunk of the the bonsai tree is like color brown, so that's mm-hmm. a different stamp. And then, for mm-hmm. example, there's like fruits um, growing on that tree, so that's gonna be like red red stamp. So, for example, that's like four stamps. So they would would like to uh, they would like stamp first the the lightest color, and then the second mm-hmm. lightest, and then oh sorry the the darkest uh, from light to dark. That will be the process, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, it, it will be four stamps. But will you need four wood blocks for that? Yeah, that's 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 oh it. Oh yeah. my goodness! Okay, <laughs> yeah, carve every detail of it. So so it's really it's really tedious, and I really I really would love to have some of like an original wood block in the future if I I can like 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 Hokusai and other uh, <laughs> okay artists. I don't think I have like an original right now. But yeah, it, and in terms of uh, how I do it, uh, I just like when you photocopy something. Uh, nowadays, you can do it in colored, but when you I photocopy my work, it's just the outline. So I just photocopy mm-hmm. the black drawing that I draw on another page, then have it scanned, then have it printed multiple times on watercolor, 
but I don't use another stamp uh, in comparison to the stamp uh, process. What I do is I color every every color by hand. So I think it's that's easier. Still, that's still a, it's the easier, but still it can be <laughs> uh, regarded as tedious. But yeah. you know, you, you you do what you have to do for your art, and that's that really yeah, is a process. It's and, a beautiful description for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and 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 for people who who think that art is something that you can just whip up overnight, or I'll be done in an hour or two hours at the most. No, yes. that's that's not how it works, right? And um, I also believe that you've had exhibits around the city at one time, and you've yes. showcased this uh, this series of artworks that you have, and you've actually been showcasing your art for a while now, with the earliest on record for me. Um, that was 2011. And given that so many uh, uh, for, you know, from different galleries in the city, do you still get nervous on the first day? <laughs> and, yeah. I wonder, and, and I wonder if you have any, let's say, rituals before you begin. Because for some uh -huh. people, they would like to throw rice from their left shoulder, if I remember, in their place. Oh, really? I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah or, or they would light some incense just to kind of like, you know, get the good vibes going, you know, good juju. Yeah. <laughs> well, they say. Okay, let me let me uh, just uh, back it up for a bit, because uh, for me there are like two like two main things that happened like, exhibiting art for me. Um, I was exhibiting from earlier than 2011 onwards, and then I was exhibiting the the masochista, the skin people, mm -hmm. and those don't sell as much. Uh, I, I think I already uh, just sold this one painting. Uh, from 2011 to 2015 or 16 so okay. that's like or every let's just say i exhibited i, I graduated uh, 20 2007 so uh, i i graduate uh, graduated like in 2007 uh, i took fine arts and then as a fine arts student and you graduate the the thing that you have to do is make uh, or join art shows you have to exhibit yes. your work but after 10 years, like let's say fast forward to 20, 2017, I wasn't really exhibiting uh, any artwork that's significant that actually really sold. So, and I think it's because I I wasn't painting. The art was okay, but I wasn't really that serious. I was just like playing around with the art style of the you know, masochism or muscle or other art styles. And then at the same time, I was pricing the artworks wrong. Uh, when you go to a gallery, uh, no one explained this to me. That's why I got it wrong. But when you go to a gallery, when you see the prices, the like a typical two by three feet artwork, mm -hmm. uh, you can see the price is like thirty thousand. So, oh, okay. So I thought that every artist should like price along like thirty thousand per painting. But what I didn't know, and then I copied that. So I was exhibiting artworks like thirty thousand per piece uh, in a gallery. But I, what I didn't know, the gallery will duplicate, or sorry, will will double the price because the the oh, art. Oh yes, so they will have to earn money on your art. Yeah, sixty thousand. So so the thirty thousand I saw was actually just fifteen thousand. So I was overpricing my stuff. So I wasn't able to sell anything. Then my canvases weren't that. Uh, what you call this? Um, uh, that sized well, or there are a lot of factors. So when 2016, 2015 came, uh, I, I, I just thought to myself, I should just reset everything. I uh, should change my art style. I'll, I'll, I'll just do something else for now. And that's where the ukiyo art style came. And you think that uh, uh, exhibiting at previous galleries should give you like lots of clout or give you like- Or experience. Of, it's yeah, experience, sure but, <laughs> <laughs> but I had to like reset, like a paradigm shift everything because um, I thought that the, the landscape was changing. There's like art in the internet already, you can exhibit online. And then, so what I did was I just tested out the market yet. So like mm -hmm. uh, I said earlier, the Ukiwe art style was, we discovered, my wife and I uh, uh, joined like art exhibits and uh, sorry, art bazaars or art events or conventions. And then we try to sell like small artworks that's really affordable. So it's not like pricey. And then, you know, I was able to sell like my first uh, Ukiyo-e art. I did it actually overnight from, let's say the, the event is tomorrow tomorrow morning. I did it the that night, the night oh, before. Oh, wow. 
Wow. And then, yeah, nice. because it's easy, easy to do because you can just you, you know just uh, multiply the the outline and then just paint it by hand. I, I I'm I really paint fast. And it, it's gonna. Man, you didn't have out. a wood block. That's one. <laughs> yeah, I have like a printer. <laughs> I have like a. Printer. Yeah, I don't so have a wood block. I, I, I have a copier machine. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> so so what, that's what I did. And then the next day, I sold like uh, one of those. I I made like seven of those like different designs, and then we tried to sell them uh, on the bazaar. So it sold like uh, five hundred a piece. So I think I sold one or two pieces for on the on the next day. Or on the two-day event so i was it was really for me a shock because i was selling art for like more than like 10 years and then overnight i did something and then it sold already in the in the morning so so that really changed my perspective so it doesn't have mm -hmm. to be a, a big painting so that you can be consider yourself an artist it doesn't have to be an expensive piece of art or you know it has like deep meaning or like like a lot of things on it it's, it's just gonna be that simple thing that you want to sell that people can relate to and then you can just you know present it to them uh imagine you're the buyer that you're gonna buy this and this price and then they buy it so that's what happened I, and I, then I, yeah. I, I love I, I love that you said that uh that uh you know for you to consider yourself as a as an art as an artist and your artwork it doesn't have to be like a 10 by 10 canvas or something like that <laughs> I mean you can sell your art in the in the smallest you know way yeah. possible like you know shrinking your art down to you know the size of half of a bond paper and yes. and and it's still considered art your sketch doesn't have to be foot long mirror long or a person yeah. long you know a headshot can equally be yes. a, a sketch it can be an art that you can sell so um and i i always ask this from most of my guests if not all of them with regards to your art uh do you feel that you validate your own art or does validation for you as an artist come from another person who gets to see your art oh well well for me it has to be uh you have to validate it first for you because there are a lot of times that uh if you try to validate it uh with other people you're just gonna you know uh, gonna please them and when you're trying to please other people you're never going to please anyone <laughs> that's you know that's the old saying right but it's true because you have to know what's beautiful for you first before you can present it with others and then even if other people don't see as it beautiful as long as you see it as beautiful at least there's one person that you're sure that you're able to like you know you that you're able to see it as beautiful exactly exactly which which, which is you and yes. and and if you also depend on other people to validate it their their standards or metric <laughs> of validation may not be the same as yours exactly. and so when you get their reviews it's like but i see it this way but no 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 as an artist i see it that way then you might even also be you know disappointed or if not even disillusioned yes. about the whole thing so it's like if people are not liking what i'm doing so what's the need for me to sh why, why should I even be sharing it? So I won't share anymore. I'll just keep this artwork all to myself. <laughs> and and for people who do that or, who, or people who who may have thought that way, you are depriving the world of your you're, art. You're you're killing your your uh, artistic self when you do yeah, that. Exactly, exactly. The world needs your art or everybody's <laughs> art. So, you know, please, you know, please continue to, to share. But um, let's go back further than 2011 and try to recall for us the moment growing up when drawing art spoke to you. Was it something that uh, your parents saw and nurtured in you or was it something that you discovered yourself? Yeah, definitely. My, my parents were really a big like uh, influence of mine because first of all, my, my dad, you know, mm -hmm. for a hobby, he, he, I think uh, he took architecture, so he likes to draw as well. Okay. And uh, he, did, he didn't practice, but um, he actually had like a, he, his uh, love is actually videography. So he's like taking videos, editing them. And then also ha we have like a Quentin Tarantino <laughs> fight kind oh, of. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, no, no, because not, not on the directing side, because Quentin like uh, uh, grew up working at a like a rental video rental shop. My dad uh -huh. has a video rental shop. That's the Quentin connection. Okay, but, there yeah. you go. So that's I was inspired by all of the stories that because we 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 watch all of them 
me and my sisters, that we watch every video VHS Betamax laser disc tape back then <laughs> that my, my father uh, uh, screened for us every every day. And then he also like dabbled in oil paintings. And I remember specifically when uh, when he was like painting like in oils. I remember specifically. I was really I don't know what age what, what that was, but uh, I remember seeing him and I said to myself, I really want to try that. But it you know knowing my dad, he's not gonna. He's really strict. That he's not gonna let you try some of the oil painting because it's smelly. And then, but I remember telling myself that one day I'll try that on my own. So. Mm -hmm. like like i see it grew up in me <laughs> but i instead just draw everything uh, with paper pen and pencil and color markers and then that's where my mom um, came in and she saw that i like drawing and then she um like fan the flames because she every time she saw something online or sorry uh in the newspaper back then when everyone was reading newspapers uh she saw like a art class or like uh animation class or comic book making workshop she she tried to like uh push me to go there i was really um nervous at first mm -hmm. but when i was in there in the classes i was really blown away and then every time she saw, saw something on the newspaper i i would just say yes because i don't know if, if it's animation or like uh painting or i just uh said yes and then that's what really uh pushed me to like become an artist and i really you know, I, I really like making stuff, uh, even though I was a child, and them having those like kind of like uh, hobbies and influence really, really made me as who I am right now. Uh, that's what I can say about that. And and I'm glad that you were, you know, in the, you went through that process and allowed yourself to to discover more about yourself and 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 about your art. And in the process of discovering, did it also dawn on you that it will also take some bravery on your part? because sadly art in our country is not something that everybody can just live alone and that having to relegate your art as a side hustle on yeah. top of your nine to five job would still be the norm so do you do you think that that kind of mental conditioning is still apparent these days or are people if not parents that is are slowly realizing that art can indeed support oneself and freelance is a new form of livelihood yeah well the thing is i went uh, through the both of those things well mm -hmm. when i graduated i wasn't really confident that people would like to buy and uh like uh, exhibit my work so i had to like uh, uh took a job I, I took a job at a call center agency mm -hmm. for like two or more years i was there then other and then i quit i really couldn't take the pressure like i was in sales and everything I, and then my plan was i was just gonna have like uh, savings to, to buy stuff that I can paint with but I was so depressed by that time because you know the pressure and everything I wasn't able to paint I was like paralyzed painting so I had to quit and then I took other jobs and then I was art related mm -hmm. and I was still able, I, I was I was painting I was doing stuff I would discover the book vandalism thing but I wasn't really like inspired to I wasn't really focusing on the art as much as I wanted to because I had a job and at the same time uh like you said that right now people are seeing the the benefit of having the artworks or people's artworks being sold in like bazaars and stuff because of the internet as well and that too is actually uh, a benefit to any artist so what i'm saying is back then like 10 years ago or more it's really hard to say if you're an artist that you're gonna do good but right now the difference is you can just post it on Instagram and you can get like a thousand followers because you 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 you, you put yourself uh, out there and then put stuff like regularly other people can see it uh, one thing I was actually thinking about uh, constantly is you know the Facebook wall that you have mm -hmm. or the Instagram wall that's that's a place where you can showcase your art that's your own gallery you can curate that you could just put like stop posting like uh toxic stuff just post art you know <laughs> just, just anything that's inspiring so that people would like to like go back to your wall and your feed and then they would love to like uh get inspired off of your wall so 
back then you can't really do that you have to like create a blog spot site or multiply site or oh god blog spot multiply those were the, <laughs> those were the days spot, <laughs> but, you know when, when multiply shut down i i really was you know in a mourning period because no Me too. Multiply, <laughs> like, multiply is the best way to to um for, for those who are not aware what multiply is this is before facebook yes. um multiply was the best um networking site online that you can um look at art you can find art you can connect with people who like the same way the same things that you do yes. and, <laughs> and 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 you can and repost and all that and you don't have to worry about getting flagged because other people's <laughs> content you can actually share and download um yeah. music as well over that you can, you uh, can see you, you can even see who uh who among your amongst your friends looked at the post that you you posted so you can exactly see that. so it's one thing that's not available right now at facebook so yeah so 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 what i'm saying is back then you have to post it like in, on albums and multiply that's the that's the gallery type but now Yes. Like when, when you have that, like multiply back then, and then you tell it to people, what's multiply? They don't they don't even know. But right now, just say they just say, What's your Facebook page? What's your Instagram? And then you you're you're constantly um, updating now your stuff online because a lot of people you know that uh, that have Instagram or Facebook can see it anytime. So you get like orders Right now, we actually have an order here, an order there, because we have also uh, like uh, I don't I mean to, but it's it's a Lazada page that, that they can just go to and then order stuff without um, even having a gallery. Right. Uh, like right now, we don't have a um, I think we don't have an ongoing show right now, uh, a group show. But actually, we do. But never mind. <laughs> but but the, but, uh, but the point is, they can they can see your work anytime, and then sometimes we're just. We're just painting and then another order arrives and then an order arrives so something like that especially after conventions so right. the point is there is right now a um a like a like a boom in the art industry of how to sell your works especially with like conventions going um uh, going around and then also art events but mm -hmm. it, it by that by the first time i i started everything i was really actually yeah really nervous because it takes some bravery to do stuff like full time as an artist because I remember I really got like super thin, uh, and then I wasn't eating because I don't have any money to buy food. Oh. But that's that's the that's the that's not the way to do it because back then I was thinking I was thinking that you know art is like the enemy of the artist. Oh, sorry, sorry, money was the enemy of the artist. If you're you're working for money. Or if you're selling stuff that's like selling out but 10 years of that um uh, i realized that was wrong <laughs> that's not the way to, because without money i won't be able to buy like art materials i won't be able to eat i won't be able to go out with friends or my family or my girlfriend at the time so mm -hmm. the best thing you can do as an artist is not to see money as like this evil corporate thing money is important because you have to you can buy stuff with it and then you can continue your art when i when I changed my perspective about money, then everything like came, uh, everything w went well because I really had to think about how I'm gonna price this right, how I'm able to where where I'm gonna sell it, and then earlier you were saying that um, uh, other people, other artists like uh, throw like rice <laughs> over their shoulder to have like good luck. But what I found out is the best thing that you can do is you can you just have to promote yourself online, like tell people about your work, and that's my ritual. I mm -hmm. have to promote before I there's a show or an event. I have to promote like a week before or the same week. I have to make new art so that people can come by, and then uh, I have to like make new books so that people. Yeah, for me that's that's the key to everything. It's it's not the ritual that you know the, i mean you, if that works for you you can do that but for me and my wife we just have to like uh what they call this push like uh ourselves to the limit that we can like uh we be ready when anyone when when someone drops by our booth that we have that what they're looking for or mm -hmm. our best of stuff so yeah it's there i agree i agree and 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 these days if you really want to get 
seen more or your your post becomes a little bit more visible than most then you just have to pay a little extra for that yeah. and, <laughs> exactly. and and that's how facebook makes money but anyway um <laughs> <laughs> er, earlier on, I just wanted to add, but I didn't want to spoil it for, for, for people. Um, when you were talking about your other process, which is called uh, Machismo, uh, as I mentioned in the intro and that you extensively also mentioned, um, I, and I didn't want to preempt by saying, but if you are trying rather difficult, if you're having a little difficulty in trying to imagine that, um, and I won't be surprised if you say that your inspiration for that is Attack on Titan, <laughs> because oh, I, that's basically what the artwork looks like yeah. when, you see, when you see it you, know, you, yes. you see you see the subjects down to their down to their veins to their you know uh, to their muscle musculature and uh and and uh, you know for for some people it's something that they would gravitate uh towards and sometimes it'll also be a reminder of of what they had seen before but just like art some people discover that at many different points in their lives. Some people may know you for your artwork, but some people probably may also know you for your poetry, which I have a copy right here. And sadly, oh, the sure. uh, <laughs> sadly the oh, uh, the internet for is, is, is a little yes is a little wonky. So um, you you probably have to go to a convention to get this but the collection that i have holding in my hands is called bunshin or bunshin i don't know uh, yeah. what is the actual um the way to say it i uh, may be i may yeah. be butchering the way the name but can you tell us the meaning of that title and how do the poems relate to one another as befitting a collection like this one so um the the bunshin collection is there's like uh actually three of three of them right now there's a pink uh -huh. one the blue one and then the purple one and that came to be because uh i don't know uh i was looking for the best pitch that i can tell you about these books is that i was able to create them because i was looking for the one you know the one girl that you're gonna marry you know, okay yourself. all right so, so the reason i was uh writing poems because i like i courted like a lot of girls i got dumped like a thousand times already <laughs> so like every girl that i was uh, into i like wrote, wrote poems about them and, all right and, and i wrote like english and in filipino or tagalog poems so the pink one is all like english poems and some of them okay. are erotic poems about you know it's just like me just i never really considered myself as a poet it's just like i, I write stuff because i want to write stuff people you know could consider them as poems or not i won't be offended but it, it's an exercise for me to like write my thoughts and then we be able to like process my thoughts and then wrote those poems and then the the English one is the per, the pink one, and then the blue one is a like uh, uh, in the Filipino uh, like Tagalog like uh, tula or poems. So that's like, but they're not translations. They're like different because sometimes I I think of like words like poems, mm -hmm. and they're they're actually better in Filipino or Tagalog words. So that's why I separated the two because you know sometimes people just want the Filipino or a foreigner might like the the English ones. And then the best thing about that is I was able to like exercise myself out of those feelings. I was able to actually find the one. I was able to when I exhibited that with the poems, uh, with along with artworks in a, in a show. Uh, by that time, I was able to like uh, have a girlfriend, uh, and then she became my wife. So eventually, I wrote the third one, like the pink and blue combined. It's the purple. So it's it's about her and about like married life as well so that's the, the the that's the yeah the the what do you call this um just of the those poems so that's the culmination of the whole you know of the whole uh the whole trilogy yeah of, uh, <laughs> of poems that you have well, that's that's so yes. sweet that's so sweet um some of your titles i was um reading this and uh, you mentioned that the poems range from you know uh from yearning for love for for having it for wishing to experience it again some of the titles here um people resonate uh there's fear here there's uh, one that's called focus there's also that's called imperfections uh there's also manila erotica um i got this from you when when i first met you last year in um uh voltcon oh i see yeah, yeah in, in, in voltcon uh in um 
versus uh, SM Paranaque, if I remember right. Yeah. But um, I was wondering, did you start off with poetry first this, be before discovering that you equally like drawing or it was drawing first and then you, know, you fell into poetry? Uh, well, it's it's kind of hard to 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 really like put my finger on it because I also like to write like mm -hmm. I write stories and then like also independent comic books, um, and then the stories I I gather from like watching a lot of stuff and then like audiobooks as well, but the the poetry I really I really never considered them as poems to begin with. I just write stuff. Ever since mm -hmm. like I was in fifth grade, I write I, I wrote my first poem, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if I still have that, but I, it's not that like you know that that good. I, I'm just saying that I just wrote <laughs> wrote stuff by and Your then I always kept, thought. yeah, and then I, I always got like a notebook like handy. So so I any thought that I come up with that oh I, I never heard that before, I haven't like seen that before anywhere else. So I just sketch it or write it or like even like jokes for uh, the comedy book, comedy book that I have. So I write it down and then the, sometimes they're just like phrases and then titles and stuff. And then eventually um, I, in, in college, so I'm just gonna, just gonna tell this story. Eventually in college, I, I showed some of the poems that I have with an, uh, a previous girlfriend, an ex of mine. So, and then I showed it to her and she was really like this, uh, really smart. She's like a, like a summa cum laude, or sorry, she's like a magna cum laude type of deal. Like she has like a okay. lot of, <laughs> she has like, she has like uh, good grades and stuff like that. She's, she always does homework. Anyway, she's like better in grammar with me. Uh, uh, she's, 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 she's really smart. She is. And, uh, and then I showed her my poem for the first time. And then her reaction was, what's this? <laughs> I don't understand this or something like that. And then <laughs> I was really heartbroken because I, I really thought that was like, what I did was really good. But, and and I'm uh, glad that you cited that because it actually leads to my next question. Sure. <laughs> because, <laughs> all right, all right. because I don't know, do you, I mean, do you feel that poetry is usually the first kind of art form that we use to express ourselves in words? I mean, you mentioned that you, you started dabbling or if not expressing your thoughts via poetry, uh, let's say, you know, when you were in fifth grade, but yeah. I, I for I for one thing also remember dabbling in poetry in high school and I always yes. felt relieved after setting, you know, stanzas to rhyme perfectly amateurish yes. as it may sound mm -hmm. or look to a trained poet. So um, do you feel that more people seem to appreciate free verse now than rhymes? Because having rhymes in your poem sounds a little juvenile for some. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's also the way that maybe that's also the, the, the reason why your ex sort of reacted uh, vehemently to to the work, it's like, what is this? So many rhymes. No rhymes at all. <laughs> I think I think about the rhyming and the like, the free burst, like cold and like uh, cold and hot coffee. Some people like it cold. Some okay, people like all right. It. So I, lo I love that analogy. Cold and hot yeah. coffee. All right, I will use that whenever people right. talk about poetry. Okay. But my my ex like she she didn't understood it. That's the thing. She did. I I really saw her like this intelligent person, and then she didn't understood it. And then it really hit me hard because mm -hmm. after that I wasn't showing anybody my poems anymore. I I was just I kept writing, but really like I got depressed. Like I not really depressed, but I stopped showing anyone my poems, or posting them online because my my girlfriend that time didn't understood it. So I thought that was stupid, and then and then. You know, I but, but I kept writing. That's the key. That just keep writing, and then there. Were, so 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 she was my ex. So so I dumped. We got well. Like, sadly, <laughs> she just proved that she was not as smart as she was because she because yeah. you know she's not but your the, girlfriend the, anymore. So you're the smart one. Okay? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but that was in 2007, I think, when before we graduated in college. And then uh, fast forward to like 2013. And another uh, girlfriend of mine, well, another ex of mine, I'm sorry, uh, but she 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 took me on a poet reading. Is oh okay, I like to she, because she was a, she's also that that the this this one is actually a poet. Wait, all this talk about ex girlfriends. Are you making sure that your wife is not there in the in the in the room with you at the moment? <laughs> no, she because... knows all about this. <laughs> she knows all about this, and she's she's okay with it as long as she's the one. You know, I mean, she's the only one, <laughs> so it's <but> cool. <laughs> But yeah, but I, I use these every this talk as well because it's really in some of my art 
art talks because it's really inspiring that how I was able to like uh, well anyway uh, yeah so that that poet ex girlfriend of mine as well took me in like a a poet a reading session in Baguio in like Mount Cloud or something mm -hmm. and oh, then yeah I've so, to, so I've yet to go there yeah right it's usually cool it's well it's it's at a, a good place as well so people were reading their poems so I never told my ex my girlfriend that time the, the one who's a poet. I actually write poems. I never told her that. Uh, she doesn't know, but I also like her poems. But so anyway, so when people were reading their, because it was a poetry slam, it's uh, the people reading their poems. And then uh, we were in the background, like we we're smoking and stuff. And then people were reading their poems. And then I was I was re hearing them. And then I was saying, telling myself, hey, that's, I could do that. I, I have more poems like that or even, but I'm like this, not to be like you know, uh, this guy's poem sucks. I I can do better than that. And then I, and then that moment clicked that it, it, I realized that I was I'm not really that better than. And that's what I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is, I can do this. I'm I'm already doing it. I'm just not mm -hmm. like letting people know about this side of me. And then so eventually, uh, I realized that, and then went back to writing. Um, well, sadly, my, well, my ex and I broke up. We went our separate ways. But after we did, and I got stuck here in Manila, and uh, because I lived there in Baguio, uh, I I wrote again. I wrote nonstop. It's like a flood that like all my emotions. I just wrote and wrote, and, and then eventually I just uh, released them online, just to uh, and then also like spoke in poetry read readings. I had to get drunk, you know, a lot. Like I, I drank gin and stuff before every <laughs> reading because I want to. I like. I had to summon the courage to speak on 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 the poems that I've never spoken aloud before. Mm -hmm. I was shaking and stuff, and then people actually resonated and loved it. And then I just kept doing it, and then I just released the book. So the lesson for me is, you know, people might not get what you're making, and that's okay. It's it's clearly okay. You have just you just have to wait for the people who would get your 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 art, your poem. You know just don't stop if you love doing it just don't stop just you, you know make stuff because eventually the right person will come and then they would love it and then they'd be best thing that they could do is praise you and then buy it <laughs> agree agree that's that's um it. when when you find yourself stumped or you're you're blocked creatively um yeah. what do you do in order to recharge yourself or in order or if not you know make yourself feel inspired again and continue yeah. to work that's a good question um first of all i have this like uh, uh folder uh, in my my computer it's called uh when the world doesn't feel right or doesn't feel seem right mm. and then it's full of like inspirational like quotes or like videos that i watch that i get pumped you know <laughs> that so some of the videos there are like uh casey neistat talking about uh art and then some of our videos and then other people's like journey through art or having to like follow your, some stuff like that you have to have like that 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 uh, space that you go to that when you're feeling doubt because the thing is i discovered and a lot of my artist friends discovered is that when you forget why you started a project that that is really like uh that that's a death sentence because you don't know why you're there <laughs> you have to like remind yourself for example this podcast you you reminded yourself oh to get forward making more episodes because you wanted to express or interview people that like uh, share the same uh like the culture and then also the art scene so mm -hmm. you have to remind yourself if not you're gonna forget and then you're just gonna leave it to rot so so for me if i'm like feeling low i just listen to the uh the my favorite uh, audiobooks. I, there's this one particular book that really it's like my Bible. It's a War of Art. Not uh, I don't know if you've heard this. It's yes, War the of War, Art. War of Art. Yes. Yeah, by, by Stephen Pressfield. Uh, yeah, Stephen Pressfield. Diva sobrang yeah. That's that's I want what I go to as a, as a my book. And then other another uh, thing that I just watch videos of it or I watch uh, some sort of like artistic videos or movies uh, like inspire me and then that's it but when 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 I'm just not inspired but if I lack ideas I just you know you know relax and then just like 
do the same thing watch movies or just surf the internet for or for a time in short just then, try to try to find inspiration where you know where and when you can and yes. if you have a direct line to Stephen Pressfield then hey that's the <laughs> best inspiration ever <laughs> well the, the thing is I posted like something like the process that I do now like with poetry and painting so so I have like in front of me like my my painting uh painting uh studio or sorry painting table and then I paint here and then on the side I have like my coffee and then also a notebook so anytime that I think of a, a phrase while I'm painting which what was which uh how I finished like four books of mine is that I, I write it down and then I took a picture of that and then I hashtag like Steven Pressfield yin, 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 on in Instagram and then he replied <laughs> he, he said did? oh yeah so, so he said like you you look like a pro man something like that and I, I actually framed that <laughs> I screen uh, that, 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 because, that will always serve as you know not not only daily inspiration but lifelong inspiration that's for yes sure. so yeah, yeah he's, he's um Steven really Pressfield is is one inspiring um, creative and uh, and a brilliant mind. He's also one of the inspirations behind, uh, or he was. He also was uh, very inspiring to one of my favorite podcasters and writers. Her name is Joanna Penn. Um, oh yeah, Joanna. Yeah. So you listen to her as well, the yeah, Creative yeah. Pen podcast. The Creative yeah. Pen, right? Yes, yeah. I love, 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 love that, uh, yeah. that podcast. Joanna, if you're listening, we love you. And love uh, you, <laughs> and and she and, and she speaks about you know the war of art and Stephen Pressfield yes. to no end and 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 it's always a daily grind. But you know you have to face the monster because if you don't, yes. then, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. And um, on the subject of recharge, I'm sure you'd agree that one also of the ways to recharge yourself is to meet other creatives. And yes. as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we did that and we met uh, at VaultCon last year and we saw each other again in Comic Yet. Yes. How, how important is it for cons like that, for indie artists these days? And is there, is there a con or, or, or has there been cons prior to the pandemic solely for just art and paintings and if there's none then who knows you might actually be the one to spearhead one <laughs> <laughs> let's see but but they are um actually the last sunday there's like art in the park so that's like like a mini okay for artists so and we we ourselves like kurosaku my wife and i really plan to to attend and join that in the near future uh but from before i was tied with galleries so i had like my works there as well so we mm -hmm. were able to sell them but yeah that was pre-pandemic but i think um comic Ed is really one of the ones that are spearheading like comics and art so that's why every time you go to their like conventions it's really packed full with artists and that's really important for us because we create like stuff like comic books and art as well so not just comic books so that that makes a lot of people like also artists or uh, comic book artists go there and then it's like a one-stop shop that mm -hmm. you can meet your creator friends or you can meet other artists and then get to know um, there's one time i uh, in comic Ed that i was able to uh, if you you can see this like color blue here it's a it's a toy that was like a package toy and it's it's a filipino toy that i bought and when, when i saw it in the booth like ah what this and I, like bought two of them <laughs> so <laughs> so it's it's really you know the exploration there and even in comic Ed, when we go there they're, they're usually like big booths i was i'm not able to like go everywhere not because i don't want to i want to but because we're all also selling and then it's it's regular jam pack with people so that you will be able to get like breaks so you have to like entertain people but Whenever I do, I always see someone like like the Buhu Labs and other people, and also uh, artists that are really good in their in their field, and they, they have their own style. So I I buy each of them as, as I can, and then it's really like you said, is it helpful? It is helpful that you can like brainstorm with other artists what they're doing. Sometimes they give you ideas, and then sometimes you can get uh give give them ideas as well. Uh, mm -hmm. like like for example the, the war of art not all people like know that book so every time i like meet another artist and they uh tell, tell me that I, they're not inspired or they're procrastinate procrastinating and stuff i i recommend them that book and then it's it's kind of like a give and take you can give stuff as well and then you can also uh get ideas from them 
So it's really a creative, like, it doesn't stop. When, once you're in, in that kind of, like, zone, it, it's really actually hard to not be inspired, you know? So, I yeah, agree. Yeah. I, I, uh, I agree. I mean, if you're in a creative mood and you feel that, okay, it's way past, um, you know, it's way past bedtime, but you need to finish, you need to finish this particular sketch, not because you have a deadline to meet as set by someone else, but sometimes yeah. you also become, uh, well, I hate using the word slave, but in a way, that's what it is. You are yeah. a slave uh, yeah. in the process. And, and no matter how much you want to slow it down and no matter how much you want to, you know, extend the, the, the timeline or whatever, uh, before you feel that it's due, you, you just have to, to say yes to it. And that's what other people who are not creatives um, have a hard time understanding. So if in case you are married, if you're listening to this and you are someone who is married to a creative, that is one of our artistic um, temperaments. And um, that's just how we roll. So, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's what happened last night. So now I overslept. <laughs> I, I kept like us uh, making these studies for this comic book uh, project that I have. So that's why uh -huh. I was late waking up. Well, I, 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 totally, I totally understand that. But um, just wondering, um, you said that you just, you've just finished an exhibit or if not a con. Uh, but will there be uh, a part of another, will you be part of another event uh, where yeah. listeners can see your art and support you as well? Yeah, so on on this week, uh, sorry, this weekend, we will be at Ayala Mall's Manila Bay for the oh. OZ Fest slash Sticky Expo. That will be a, uh, I'm just looking at my calendar, it's going to be a, Two day event saturday and sunday and then right after that it's going to be comic cat uh uptown mall or up yes you you up town center yes um i center. will i will be there so i will awesome. see you there right. of course on april on up town center by the time this episode airs uh that ayala mall's manila bay event would have would have probably been done yes. and over but at least you know uh i will see you at the uh, up town center for right. uh for comic cat yeah and um, if in case they want to learn more about you and your work uh, on social media, where can they follow you? So, yeah, thank you for that. Um, so you guys can follow our group, Kurosaku. We have an Instagram and Facebook of it. So just type Kurosaku, K-U-R-O-S-A-K-U. -uh, -U -U. I'm dyslexic, so I don't know how to spell. But that's, that's it. And then I also have like my personal Instagram and Facebook. Just search Marius Black, mm -hmm. so just uh, M A R U S B A B L A C K. So at, on Instagram and on Facebook, and for the Manila Okiwe, so I just I just had to show you this. Uh, so these are the Manila Okiwe artworks I have. So this one is in like uh, Filipino scramble making, and this this already this also has a like a page on mm -hmm. its own. It's it's Manila Okiwe. So I have this this other the other thing that I have. It's like a, well, uh, I will share these uh, yeah. these uh, links to the uh, the show yeah. notes. So, not so to worry, so people will see yeah. it. So the Manila Okiwe Facebook page and Instagram as well. So we have like both of those. We don't have like I'm sorry, we don't have Twitter or anything else or TikTok right now. Just Facebook. That's right. You, you you shouldn't be you shouldn't feel that you're supposed to be doing everything else that yeah. everyone else is doing. So if if that platform is not for you, then that's that's okay. That is personally fine uh you know to each his own uh platform yes. and um yeah uh, and just continue doing what you're doing and uh you know and sharing your art will be all the more better for it and uh and that is it that is a wrap for today thank you so much uh marius for joining us on this episode um thank you also to spine books for being with us since uh, day one now if you are a creative and you would like to be featured on the podcast feel free and just email us at urban fantasy ph at gmail.com. Now follow me as well as our links for updates on the podcast as well as in my own work at cjedmonds.com. Until the next episode in the Authors Unite, creatives stay inspired and stay steadfast. Keep creating and we'll keep reading and that goes to sh and that goes without saying that we will keep buying. <laughs> stay safe, stay creative, namaste and blessed be. That was another episode of Urban Fantasy PH. Join us next time as we feature another creative soul who wants their art to be seen, heard, and shared. If you have your own work to share, 
just email us at urbanfantasyph at gmail.com. Till the next episode, this is independent author, singer-songwriter, radio personality, voice actor, and fellow creative, C.J. Edmonds, reminding you to always listen to your heart, create with your mind, and share with your soul. Goodbye, everybody. Namaste. Blessed be.